Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can come visit my store Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4, Saturday 10 to 2. Check out my website, all the normal subscribes and all the YouTube, Facebook, all that good stuff. I know it's been a while since it's been me because you guys have been spoiled from Audrey, but I'm actually here to talk about one of my favorite types of animals. I've never done a video like this before. So today I'm gonna talk about uh, how to care and set up uh, for a baby Mississippi map turtle. We actually have some captive bred babies that we got here at the BioDude Houston for sale. And I have a lot of people asking me about radio sliders and other things. Obviously, this is for a baby, so we're gonna talk about larger aquarium sizes and the types of filtration. But I'm gonna go over the different types of filtration, how they work when it comes to reptile husbandry, and what steps you need to keep take as a keeper to make sure that your water quality is at an A standard because that's what these guys need. So first, let me show you this little dude right here. And I know, I'm fairly certain it's a boy because of how large our tail is. So the, this species is sexually dimorphic and the aspect of females can get up to 10 inches. Up, so I've, there, I've even saw, saw online that some specimens got up to a foot, but the average is eight to 10. Now you can see how long this turtle's tail is. Now female, females of this species have so, much shorter tails because the genitalia is actually in the, in the tail. Um, and map turtles are also, also easily identified a couple ways. So like, you know, cooters and other things like this. Um, you know, these guys, they get their name map turtles because they look like terraform creations that are on maps because of the little indentations on the top and as their scoots. So just like other Shalonians, they are capable of pyramiding from improper care. Um, and these guys are extremely specialized in the aspect of they are very expensive to set up. You are hearing it from BioDude. If you, if you want to get an aquatic turtle and you don't want to spend the money to take care of that turtle, then you shouldn't have it because it, they are very expensive and they need an exorbitant amount of space. Even a male, a male Mississippi map turtle that might get five inches, you know, five and a half inches, they still need a minimum of the 75 gallon. That is minimum. Uh, an adult female Mississippi map turtle would need a minimum of 125 gallons. That's a big enclosure. And then on top of that, you have a hundred, almost 90 gallons of water in that 120 gallon tank that you have to keep clean. So for most Shalonians, your goal is to have them be outside in a pond or something like that, but that always isn't possible and that's why BioDude's here. So what I have in front of me, I have a Reptisun, uh, sorry, I have a uh, Aquion 20 gallon long tank. Okay, now this is an actual fish tank, so I know this is gonna hold water. Sometimes when you buy reptile-centric tanks um, that are specifically just for reptiles, you really wanna make sure that they're actually waterproof because sometimes the silicone seals aren't as powerful or strong as you want them to be, and that can lead to issues down the road. So what I have in front of me is, I wanna talk about filtration first. So with their smaller size, you know, you can get away with like a canister filter. No problem with this species. When we're talking, you know, young red ear sliders, young soft shells, things like that, yes, you can get away with a canister filter. But once you have an adult turtle, like, a, a, you know, a big female red ear slider or something like that, you need to start thinking outside and pond filters. But you know, we carry all the sizes of the Fluval canister filters that go up to like 125 gallons. So it's a product that BioDude has been really happy to carry. If you are on a little bit more of a budget, um, we do offer the Whisper line. So the Wilper, Whisper 10, 20, and 40 eyes. Uh, you know, and then of course you can also try, you know, sponge filters for baby babies as well, like neonatal uh, turtles. Uh, but for, you know, after they reach about a month, I highly recommend spending that money and getting yourself a good quality Fluval canister filter or an Eheim canister filter. Uh, those are two really, really reputable brands that I personally had experience with. So let's talk about filtration and let's talk about why it's important. So there is three different types of filtration. There's chemical filtration, there's mechanical filtration, and there's biological filtration. So just like with our reptiles, 
there is a way to have your aquarium almost become quote unquote bioactive. So this is the Fluval 107 canister filter. This is going to be good up to about 29 gallons of water. Um, we're only going to be running about 15 gallons in here. So when I look at filters, I take 50%. If it, if it fits a 75 gallon tank and there's 60 gallons in there, guess what? I'm buying a canister filter that's for 120 gallons because turtles create so much waste that you need one almost the next size up to be able to accommodate that larger biological load. So let's talk about the three different types of filtration. So let's talk about mechanical. Now mechanical is really easy to understand. Uh, so mechanical is the taking the use of a uh, medium and extracting you know dirt and things from said medium so as you can see right here as far as the mechanical filtration uh, you you know you have your different po foams and pads and things like that okay then you have your chemical filtration now your chemical filtration though those are things like peat moss things like activated charcoal that are going to take out the, like some of the things into the water, help with your pH, and regulate it that way. As you can see, what's nice about this canister filter, this is this phosphate pad. So phosphate is extremely, um, you know, can be very bad if in excess, and this helps remove some of that. And then in here, we have some activated carbon. So in here, in this packet alone, we have some really good chemical filtration, and we have a little bit more space if we wanted to put any other types of filtration in this, you know, containment device. And then we have our biological filtration. Now, biological filtration is exactly as it sounds. It is taking specific bacteria that grows on various surface mediums, such as the wheel on your hang on back filters, the bio wheel, that's for biological filtration. You know, in our Fluval filter, we're also going to be using some of these. This is the Fluval Biomax. So what this does is this creates um, a very specific type of surface area that um, will harbor and grow your beneficial bacteria. So what those beneficial bacteria does is it helps take nitrogen and nitrify some of the things uh, so that way your plants and other things can get macronutrients which then cycles back into your aquatic substrate or whatever base you're using as well as helping with the water quality. So again there's a lot of different approaches with filtration but not all filters cover all three. You need a filter for long term that covers all three. So when you're looking at the Whisper 40i, this is a really easy way to look at it. So this is a standard hang on back filter, sucks it up from the bottom, pulls it up through um, and out. So it has two different types of filtration. So it, it works and filter in two different ways. So you see how it says three filters in one? So first it's going to pump up here through the bottom and inside your bio bag you have your activated carbon which is your chemical filtration. Okay? Then it has this special mesh, mesh out here that also catches your, so, so, some of your debris and other things like that. Then it's going to take that and move it through this front piece right here. Now you see how this front piece has like fuzziness on it? Now they're claiming that that bio scrubber that's on the outside is going to cultivate the beneficial nitrifying bacteria to help benefit your water that's exactly like this. Okay, so obviously this is a good little pump, but when it comes to a good little filter, when it comes to a turtle that's, you know, older than a year, I would probably want to definitely look up into something different, but it's a good starter filter. So that pretty much covers everything. So what? So essentially what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to take some of these Biomax balls here. And I just want you guys to be able to see what they look like. Awesome. And they also make these in the form of, uh, of like, uh, they're called bio balls. So I'm actually going to open up a little bit and I'm just going to put a few of these right on top, right like this. Okay. Okay. Then I take the lid and then put it down and lock. We are now locked in place. Now these always have to be at 
under the tank, okay? These snap you when you hear that click, they snapped into place. Okay. Now I'm not going to turn this on and prime it yet because I don't have any water. So Mississippi map turtles, like their name implies, they are from uh, the, on the, the sides, the southern part of the United States in the Mississippi River and surrounding tributaries that go down to the Gulf. They are a very, very common species that you can find, but that also kind of should envision in your mind what their habitat is like. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put down whatever uh, the base that I want to use, and I'm actually going to use gravel. So this is actually some of my larger stone gravel here that uh, we sell by the bulk case on the biodew.com, just like my other aquarium rocks. This is a 16 by 12 by 8 bulk box. Okay, so let me get there some gloves on. So I also have some larger Oklahoma Creek bed rock, so that I also sell by the bulk case on my website. So first, I'm actually, I got a couple larger rocks, like here, that I'm going to want to place around for aesthetics and, of course, to make it look a little bit different. And then I'll also be able to utilize these. Now, you, now if you wanted to try to go more of a really queen of clean aquatic route, you could try to use some type of stratum, but with how active turtles are, with them liking to dig and other things like that, I don't know how effective it's going to be. Um, but I'm going to try to make this as natural looking as possible, mainly just because I want this guy to feel like we are right at home. So one of the things I love about keeping turtles as pets is that they have remarkable personalities. They're all different. Um, you know, they all have different tendencies. They all have different things they like to do. Um, but when you're taking care of them, you know, there are some things that are extremely important, you know, and that is the biggest thing I want to drive home is that red ear sliders, probably number two for getting the biggest shit stick in our community. Iguanas and your large monitors are number one. Um, many, many, many people buy these, these red ear sliders or other critters and then they actually start growing and um, they're extremely underprepared and under financially prepared for what this animal takes. So while it appears that turtles are extremely hardy, that you can neglect them and do this and that, they do suffer long term damage that is extremely detrimental to them that you might not notice right away. As you guys know, my wife is a veterinarian um, and she does see us about two thirds of what she sees right now is exotic animals. So reptiles, birds, things like that, mainly all reptiles. Um, and she was, you know, she, almost every night when she comes home, it's always the same story. Oh, I got another, you know, I saw another red ear slider today. Its eyes were swollen shut. You know, it was really underweight, this and that. It's always the same thing. Um, and it really makes me mad because, you know, it's just because of, in my opinion, the lack of information that's out there that, in my opinion, should be out there because there is, because everywhere you look, you can get a red ear slider. So with the, or a Mississippi map or, or, you know, or whatever. So I digress. So I got a nice layer of rocks down pretty happy with this if you wanted to get creative you can have it be like other you know other areas um, like make some go higher or whatever but I'm gonna be you know taking a little bit more of a, an approach here so these larger rocks are also extremely good anchor points which I will get into soon so I do know that in the Mississippi River lots of magnolia leaves Leaves are great with putting into aquariums because not only can they create a solid uh, microbial hotspot, they also can serve, if you pin them down like I'm doing, they can also be served as a little uh, snack or hiding spot for whatever types of small vertebrates or invertebrates that you might get established in here. Um, and of course, some of these leaves are going to float. And of course, these leaves are going to release some tannins. And that's, that's, exactly what I'm, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. 
but I know for a fact that um, you know in the wild there is you know magnolia leaves, oak leaves, cypress, pine, all that crap mixed in there with good circulating water. So now I have some natural woods over here. This is my Mopani. So the Mopani root wood. So I got a couple spots. So what's extremely important is giving them the ability to get out of the water. They have to get completely dry to bask multiple times a day. Rocks are great. Rocks absorb heat, emanate that heat back into your water. Sometimes if the rocks are big enough, you don't even need to use a turtle heater, which is outstanding. So I'm going to put this right over here. That's what I want. Now, can anybody guess where my basking area is going to be? Right here. We're going to be able to get really close, really, really close to that heat lamp, which is exactly what I want. Then I have some other types of wood in here. Now, as you're sure you've noticed, you notice how I'm resting the rock, this on top of the rock right here? Resting on top of rock here, resting rock here. This back pivotal piece is up against this rock here. This is to prevent slipping. This is extremely important. When you are building your turtle enclosure, you need to make sure that you are making it so that way the stuff cannot fall down. You need to make sure that whatever you're putting in there isn't going to just fall apart and potentially crush your little inhabitant. I think that looks really good. So, okay. So, I'm going to review real quick with you guys. So, we have some magnolia leaves right here, which again, they're going to absorb water and go down to the bottom. For filtration on the inside, we have our assorted pads. We have an ammonia and phosphate remover. We have our nitrate remover. We also have our Biofoam Max and our, so our mechanical, uh, our biological, which is right here. And then we have our chemical right here. So we have all three proper stages of uh, filtration. And then we're using a Fluval 107. Um, I'm going to kind of play around with the lighting and stuff here after we're done. So for me, the next step is then figuring out uh, how I, what I want to put in here, what I want to do. So I have already got some stuff set aside. So the first thing is first is it's time to dump some water in here. So again, I got about 15 gallons right here. I'll be putting in approximately that amount. Now as this tank matures, the woods will release tannins into the water, which I'll show you at the end of this video. The water is going to turn brown, and that's good. Tannins are natural pH neutralizers, so it will help keep your turtle's eyes nice and healthy and clear. It will also help them with their shells. Over time, if you provide aquatic turtles with poor filtration, they can get weak shells. They can get improper bone development, especially if you don't, uh, uh, improper shell development, especially if you don't provide them with essential vitamins and nutrients and lighting. Uh, they can also have improper sheds. Yes, they shed their, they shed their shell as they grow. And then it's also important that if you're keeping females, that you pay attention to their breeding season time of the year. So that way you can give the girls um, a place to lay their eggs. Because regardless if they breed or not, a lot of times they still will develop the eggs. So for one turtle, here are our opportunity zones now that the water's in here. We have an opportunity zone up here until we get a specific size, okay? We have an opportunity zone all right here throughout the top to dry. So I feel like that's really important. I also have a piece of cork bark here that I might incorporate, I'm not sure. I'm gonna see, which is gonna give us another opportunity 
uh, to get out and kind of dry off. So I think my next step is to get the filter going. So now that the filter is good to go, um, let's, see, let's see if I can get this going on the first try. So when you get it started, so you notice how this is right on the outside here. This knob in the middle, push this knob down. So this knob right here, it's down, okay? I know that I double checking these, turning them to the right, making sure they're tight, they're tight. I'm gonna take the plug, I'm gonna plug this baby in. Prime it. All right, so filter's working. So when you prime this, you wanna make sure that there's no water in the filter, okay? And then we're just gonna pump it and now we're going and it's good. So we got the Fluval filter up and going. You can see how much the water's moving. If you wanna dampen it in any way, shape or form um, to prevent the splashing or things like that, uh, you can try to put some type of, uh, you know, you can try to put a type of sponge or something kind of here onto the side to try to have it centralized in one direction. So, pretty good. We got, the, we got about 17 gallons of water in here uh, with the rocks, the Mopani, and the assorted woods. And we have a lot of opportunity zones to be able to come out and bask. So as far as a heater is concerned, um, the Mississippi maps do like the water to be around room temperature. So if, you're, if your water stays pretty cold, um, especially during the winter time, I do definitely recommend a turtle therm. Um, these are good because they have an outer coating that protects the turtles from biting them and it can just overall just prevent issues. Uh, so I am actually uh, gonna put that right over here. Okay. Next, I want to build a little bit. So, I do have a pothos plant right here that I've de-dirted. I'm actually going to put this plant right like this in the back. Okay. I like that a lot. Okay. Then I have some really nice live moss here that I'm actually kind of excited to use. So, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of cork bark that's going to float right here. Okay. Got a couple really nice pieces. Oh, man. So this is going to literally attach to this because it's always going to be wet. Put you right there like that. Now, obviously, there's some dirt, some clay dripping down. Filter's going to pick it all up, going to take care of it. I also have some other type of moss right here. And I'm just going to scatter some here into the back. Just give some of these areas just a little bit more of a uniqueness. Now again, the basking area is going to be like centralized right here, so I can't go too crazy. But again, I have some nice floating spots right here that I can easily take advantage of. So Mississippi maps do like darker water, or darker water. They do like darker water, but they also like the water to be deep. So it's very, very important that even for a baby that you're providing them at least eight inches of depth uh, to be able to accommodate that. I also have a really nice cutting of a uh, creeping fig right here. Now this stuff can grow out of water. I've grown it around my pond, in my backyard, a bunch of other places. So I'm going to go right like this. Now that I have some, some plants in here, now you can also put in some aquatic plants. So water hyacinths, you can also put in, you know, um, some, some, some simpler plants, but turtles are generally very, very destructive. So there's a big chance of those aquatic plants getting completely destroyed. And that's why I'm going with some hardier pothos and some other things like that that I know are going to grow right out of here. Um, you can see how much the water is moving. So what I like to do is I'm going to put a little line right here just so that way I can always see how much water we're losing every day. So that way I know how much I need to add. Next comes 
water maintenance and getting it jump started. Now I like to, I highly recommend that you let your water cycle, okay? That you let this cycle for a bit before you put in your critter. If you can't do it, you can't do it. But there are some things, well, this is the first product, they call called Turtle Clean, that Exoterra sells. Now what this stuff does, this is a really unique product. Essentially what it does is it puts bioactive, or it, it puts their biological bacteria into here, which works with your other filtrations to help keep the water a little bit cleaner, reinforce some of those processes. And then we have the Fluval Aqua Plus Water Conditioner which is also very important. So I am gonna actually, uh, I actually have some water conditioner already opened, but it's very important that you follow the instructions with this and not overdo it. Um, as far as the turtle clean, this is something that you use maybe, I think it's once, once every, once a month. And it's five milliliters uh, per 10 gallons. So it's really, really easy to use. Um, essentially, we're just gonna open this up and we're gonna put about five milliliters right into this. That way it's super easy. Next, we have some aquatic mosses. Now aquatic mosses are amazing because they are very, very easy to grow and they are great at keeping your water clean. So I'm definitely gonna get some of this aquatic moss. I actually started selling this on my website on the biodude.com. We have a bunch of different types. So this first moss right here is called Taiwan moss. Looks a lot like Java moss, but it's not. So this moss right here, I'm actually just gonna kind of spread around right in there and it's just gonna look like loose moss all throughout and then over here we have what I like to call the spiky moss so you can see this moss is a different shade of green and this is a this is an aquatic moss that can also grow terrestrially so this moss right here I'm gonna let that the Taiwan moss be loose and free but this moss down here I'm actually gonna attach it down in an open area that's gonna be exposed to light on top of the Mopani. So it's directly attached to the Mopani right here. Okay, and you can see I got a lot of stuff going on in here. This, this might seem a little busy, but this is, this is what these guys like, okay? They like a lot of opportunity um, to be able to put stuff. And if you really wanted to, you could theoretically put this right here. Um, but I just, I see, I see it, the filter being a little bit of an issue. So I'm gonna keep it right there. And also this, these two bars right here keeps it into play so it's more of a secure structure. Now what's gonna be great is as this water is nice and flowing, it's gonna be a lot of oxygen. So this moss is just gonna go and take over and the turtle's gonna love it. So, all right. So we have the Biodude River Rocks. We have some Biodude Oklahoma Creek Stone. We're, at, we're running a Fluval 107 with a Turtle Therm aquatic heater. Next, let's talk a little bit about what we're feeding and what we're supplementing. So Matt Turtles, like all Shalonians, they need a varied diet. This is very important, from live food to frozen food. Now, when it's frozen, you want to make sure that it's thawed out. So we actually have quite the assortment here for our critters. So our map turtles in store alone, they're fed crickets, waxworms, mealworms, daphnia, bloodworms, and baby brine shrimp. And let me tell you, they go, uh, as Audrey would say, they go ham for these. Um, essentially what we do is we take the cube and we let a good portion of it fall out um, in like a small cup and then we just dump it right into the tank and they just go absolutely crazy for it. Um, and that's the same thing with the bloodworms or the daphnia. For crickets and things like that, I just throw a couple of them on top of the water. So I'm sure you're asking, well, BioDude, how do we know that your critter is getting, you know, the supplements and things? Obviously, with an aquatic turtle, it's very, very hard to dust the supplements. But if, or the dust the supplements, the dust the feeder insects. But if you're able to dust the waxworms, if you're able to dust the crickets or the roaches and get them to tong feeding, which, again, turtles are intelligent, so operant conditioning is very easily done. You know, you give them the stimuli with the tongs, with the, with, with the reward, and you can have them tong, tong trained in a matter of months. Um, and that's a really good way to make sure that they get their supplements. So since we're going to be providing UVB, we're going to be providing them calcium with no D3 because they're going to be synthesizing the D3 from the UVB that they're getting from the bulb. And then we're going to be using the minor all indoor. If you are keeping your turtle outside, use the minor all outdoor. 
um, and then of course the same type of calcium. Uh, we're going to be doing the calcium twice a week and the minor all once a week. Um, and it's, it's very important for shell development. It's very, very, very important. Water quality, you can tell if their water quality is bad, if their eyes get swollen, if their eyes get red, if they're constantly rubbing their face. That's a bad sign of too much nitrates, too much ammonia. If you are dealing with a, a shell that seems abnormally soft or they're not growing evenly, it looks almost bumpy, well then you're dealing with a, a potential calcium issue. So for the lid, we had to make, I made something a little bit different. So I literally only have this on here because I have employees and I don't want employees poking themselves and cutting themselves. So that's why that duct tape is on here. But I essentially took wire cutters and I cut this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and you notice how I did this. I love how this turned out. This is nice and secure on the top and I cut specifically around the fluval, the fluval pieces. Now you can do this for the cord from the turtle therm as well. Again, this is ugly, ignore it. But it just gives you guys some ideas for your DIYers to, you know, instead of building a whole new lid for yourself. And now as far as our lighting and our heating is concerned. So first, let's go with lighting. I'm always going to recommend my BioDude Glow and Grows. But like everything else, I've been waiting on them for over 100 days to get here. And I love these Aqua Skies. They are amazing little bulbs. Got the, got the plug right here. Let me take this out of the packaging. Now, this plant, this bulb, this is not a UVB bulb, guys. This is specifically for your live plants. This is specifically to help provide a photo period, okay? Um, if, I, if you don't have the money to get a plant light for your aquatic turtle or if you're not running any aquatic plants or any plants in the tank at all, I don't necessarily say you have to get this, but I'm always going to recommend it to use in conjunction with your UVB light to provide a more accurate and feasible spectrum for your critter. So I'm going to plug this in. There we go. That looks nice. So again, the water is a little cloudy, a little murky, but that's okay. This is, this is for the turtle. The most important is that we have the ability to get out and bask. So I'm actually going to put this in the back like here. Okay. Next, the type of bulb that you use is very important. The bulb has to be able to get wet. So Zoo Exoterra, like a lot of their amazing products, Makes, uh, makes a special bulb specifically for turtles that's meant to constantly get splashed. So this is the bulb we're gonna use. We're gonna start with a 50 with the hopes of getting a 85 to 88 degree hotspot. Uh, we're hoping to get around that much of a hotspot. Humidity's not that big of a factor for me because I'm not really gonna worry about it. And I'm gonna be using a reptile dome aluminum lamp fixture for the bulb. So essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna take this bulb out of the box and we're gonna have this swamp basking spot on for 12 hours a day. So, and during the uh, when, first thing in the morning, this light, the plant light, and our UVB is gonna turn on. So the heat bulb is gonna be right here. Next, uh, this is a 12 inch UVB. I'm gonna move this actually over right here. And then the UVB bulb is gonna be right here, snug up against the basking spot. So that way, as they're basking, they're also getting essential UVB. And for that, I'm going to be using a Reptisun T5HO uh, 5.0, which is going to be a pretty solid spectrum for southern United States. Um, and, you know, give them the proper UVB and stuff that they need, which is super important because they use the UVB in the heat for essential homeostasis. The filter allows the water to be kept clean, so that way their eyes their nose, and every and their skin stays healthy. And that is where most turtle keeper, keepers fail. You cannot have your turtle survive off turtle food. Let me show you turtle food. So this is a good, like, treat. This is a good supplemental food. Things like this are not permanent staple foods, okay? They are great 
when used in moderation, but you want to keep with live foods. It's very, very important. I also talked about the water turning a deep color. Now, we haven't done a water change on this in a couple days. You see how dark this is? And you can see our little dude right there. Oh, so precious. So, this may be pretty unappealing to some, um, but the turtles love it. And this tannin, these tannins that are in here, that is releached from the wood, creates a really, 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 really solid pH neutral water. Um, the water, you know, doesn't get as gross and, uh, you know, stagnant as easily. It just really helps with the overall husbandry of your animal. And you can see how we're down there swimming and growling on this stuff. Pretty exciting. I love having, having baby turtles here. So let's, let's do it. We're going to take these off. Yeah, the Borneo's calling. Oh my goodness. Look how little and precious we are. Oh my goodness, yes. So again, you can see the remarkable scoots going down the back and the unique curvature on the border ends here. And we're a little upset, as we should be, and you can see the bottom plastron here. Nice and healthy, there's not a big indentation of malnutrition. A lot of times if you see a big dent right here in aquatic turtles, sometimes that can mean that they're not getting enough food. Next. All right, dude, in with ye. Oh. He's like, I don't know. I don't know about this. Where are you going, dude? Can I grab you? He's like, nope. There he goes. There he goes. One of God's own prototypes. Too weird to live and too rare to die. That's a quote from Hunter S. Thompson. You know, he's one of my favorite, or was one of my favorite. He's one of my top. So, guys. The turtles can be some of the most rewarding pets that you can have. Uh, it's just, you saw what steps I took for this setup. It's very, very common that when you get your first baby turtle, that your setup is gonna be more than $200 just for the setup, not even including the turtle. And 50% of that is gonna be, gonna be your filtration. I cannot stress the importance of filtration alone. Now, again, guys, you can find all this stuff on my website, all this stuff on my point of sale. Check out my blog. Check out my aquatic turtle kits. Um, check out my canister filters, my turtle heaters. Um, if there's something else that you think we should be offering for the, for the turtles, please let me know. Um, you can also put in like small pieces of calcium bone um, in specific areas that they can come on and bite, which they will do. Um, you know, and there's so much, so much cool stuff that you can do. So... Again, you guys know me. My name is Josh Halter. I'm owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Please check out my website. Please come check out my point of sale here. If you so would like, you can come and purchase this enclosure here, fully set up, ready to go with one of our map turtles. Um, and, and you guys, of course, can, can come see Big Boy here. I really appreciate everybody's support. Thank you so much for, for uh, continuing helping me with, uh, achieve my goals and my dream. The Dude Abides. <laughs>